on this edition of Around BCC. Bristol Community College preps for a cultural celebration of the Christmas season. Our culinary arts department creates a pair of traditional holiday desserts, and a husband and wife tandem share their stories of their careers after BCC. Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. Even though we are in the month of November, the holidays here in Bristol County is right around the corner. And Bristol Community College is very pleased to be promoting an event in early December, which is associated with its Luzo Centro program. And we're going to talk about the event, which encompasses an art exhibit and a concert. And we'll get into all that in our in-depth segment today. Joining me uh, on set here is Jose Costa. He is the director of Luzo Centro here at Bristol Community College, and Ann Danis, who is the music director and conductor for the Fall River Symphony Orchestra. And joining us on the line right now is Vice Mayor Roberto de Medeiros. He's the Vice Mayor of Lagoa in San Miguel in the Azores. And we're going to start with the Vice Mayor, if that's okay with the two of you. Sure. Mr. Vice Mayor, thank you for joining us today. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Tell us a little bit, if you, if you can, about the, uh, the exhibit which is coming to Fall River. It is a holiday nativity scene exhibit. Um, tell us a little bit about what these exhibits are and what people can expect to see when you bring them to Fall River in December. Well, before I start that, I was, uh, before I start talking about this, this uh, exhibit, exhibit um, I must tell you that um, since 1999 that we uh, are bringing this kind of exhibitions about our uh, Dorian Nativity Scene Museum from La Coa. I must tell you that uh, since um, 1999 that we are doing uh, in different uh, cities and different museums and galleries in, uh, in New, New England um, exhibitions about um, the nativity scene figurines made in the uh, since 1862. Mm -hmm. And um, this kind of figurines tells or talks about our story. These figurines uh, talk about Lagoa story, Azorian island story, because we can uh, really see in this kind of exhibition the way of life of the people who lives in the Azorian island. So um, this exhibition in um, BCC Gallery will be um, an honor for us, but because um, we, um, we are going to this uh, beautiful gallery, we have this year a different exhibition than the others we brought before to the United States. This exhibition uh, will represent um, the time of Rome. Will be an activity scene, an activity scene uh, exhibition from the time of Rome in Italy. Uh, while way of life, uh, a biblical way of life of um, old time, you know, and then uh, this exhibition. This exhibition um, we may, we'll be made um, in the gallery with the uh, figurine, small figurine, mm -hmm. clay figurine, and even the craft maker, the, the, the artisan, I'm talking about the artist, will be, will be there um, working, making the figurines for people to see and um, understand how important are the nativity scene figurines for our tradition. Because the, um, uh, the manufacture of uh, nativity scene figurines in Azorian Island is the tradition of Lagoa mm -hmm. down home. So it is, um, it, it is very um, important for the, for the people who have that Azorian background here, Mr. Vice Mayor, that um, if, they, if they grew up 
in, in San Miguel and in the Azores, they'll be familiar with this and it would be a way for them to reconnect to some of their traditions uh, growing up in the Azores, is that correct? Yes, is, is that correct? And uh, uh, you know what? Um, in 1862, uh, two people from the mainland in Portugal, they came to Lagoa and they opened um, a ceramic factory. And when they opened, when they opened that this this uh, factory, they um, promote they. Um, they brought a, a tradition from the mainland, from there where they came from the north of Portugal, mm -hmm. and they uh, they give the idea for the ceramics, for the, the people who work in the in the factory, to make that this kind of nativity scene figurines because it was a way of help the family in their economy, you know, making the nativity scene figurines and. Uh, and going around the villages and selling these figurines, you know, and then they start making their villages and making the, um, you know, the, the, the perception. <clears throat> so that one started the tradition of making perception in Lagoa with the nativity scene figurines made here in Lagoa mm -hmm. by the, the um, original ceramics, you know, by the people who work with the clay in the factory of ceramics, you know. Right. So this tradition started since 1862 in Lagoa. And nowadays, or uh, even um, since 1996, when we opened our museum, Nativity Scene Museum, when we opened that, we start taking um, a copy of the, the collection we have in, um, in the Nativity Scene Museum. And then we, we, we got a, a a copy of this uh, exhibition, and we started bringing to where our um, um, Azorian people immigrate, you know. So we went to Canada first, or Toronto, and after somebody from New Bedford mm -hmm. invited, us, invited us in 1999 or the New Bedford Art Museum to bring yeah. in this, this exhibit for that. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, every year, all many galleries and museums and um, libraries and all the, 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 the um, uh, uh, sister town and sister cities of Lagoa started inviting us because we, we want to promote this tradition. And uh, since uh, 1996, when we opened our museum, we have been invited to go to the mainland, to the other islands, to Canada, to, and to the United States, mm -hmm. promoting this kind of activity. And even here, we do a lot of competition with with the uh, You know, I mean, uh, uh, making presepius in the homes of mm -hmm. the people around our village of the door. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Vice Mayor, I, I appreciate your time. I know your time is, is very sensitive. I appreciate you joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you on uh, December 7th for the grand opening of the, uh, the exhibit here at Bristol Community College. Thank you for joining us. Okay, thank you, too. Uh, I must tell you that um, the grant maker will be making the figurine, um, and we are going to um, start making the exhibition. And as soon as we arrive to the United States, on the 1st of, the, um, of December, on 29, I'm sorry, 29 of November, mm -hmm. we arrived to the uh, United States, and we are, on the next day, um, day after, we're going to start making the, this exhibition. Very good. To be open in seven. Very good. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Vice Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Take care. We'll be a pleasure for it. Thank you. Just so uh, the viewers at home, the exhibit will be held at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery here at the Forever Campus of Bristol Community College, beginning with the opening ceremony on December 7th and running right through the end of December up into uh, the new year. So let's talk with our two other guests here briefly. Jose, how important is this type of exhibit, and, and the Vice Mayor touched upon it, but how important is it for people of this region to, to sort of connect back to their heritage? I think that the Mayor, the Vice Mayor said, said it all, which is we bringing uh, something that is 
so authentic that is, uh, is really part of uh, the fabric of, uh, of a people, in this case the, the Azorians, uh, and specifically from the island of San Miguel. So this is uh, something that you know, uh, people around here, they can see with their own eyes, okay, a tradition, yeah. and also uh, a, a tradition that is always uh, in the makings. Because these nativity scenes, um, they, uh, you know, they always add uh, uh, more elements. Every year that, that uh, he does he, uh, uh, this, um, this kind of exhibit, and I've seen uh, a few of them around the year. <clears throat> he, um, uh, there is always a new element mm. added to that. Uh, very important also is because, the, as, as he said, the nativity scene. You know, we, we think about the nativity scene just just one with with you know the, the traditional one, which is Bethlehem. You know, the right. uh, but the nativity scene mirrors, okay, or, or represents the daily life in a town mm -hmm. or in an island. Right. So you can see the procession, the annual procession. Mm -hmm. You can see the uh, people going to, uh, uh, you know, in the old times going to, uh, you know, to, to, to the well and uh, getting the water. You can see, you know, the, the life of the, of the village, uh, you know, taking place uh, mm -hmm. uh, right there. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important because it's also it's a piece of history. It's sure. a, it's part of a, of a uh, uh, people, okay, and what these people do, okay, mm -hmm. in, you know, every, every day. Uh, so I think it's very very informative. Mm -hmm. So you, it's like reading a book, okay, um, but it's more than that. You can see with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. Another big part of the opening night is mm -hmm. a performance by the Four of a Symphony Orchestra, and that's why Anne is here. Um, not only will it be a, a holiday concert for the orchestra, but a big part of this concert, Anne, is some selections of some traditional Portuguese Christmas carols, if you will. Um, tell us a little bit about how that will fit into the concert that evening on December 7th. It's actually an integral part of the concert, a very large part of the concert, and uh, it was actually Jose's idea. He brought it to, to the attention of several of us in May and said, would it be possible to do something like this, and, and my first uh, thought was, how do we find the music? And he was uh, good enough to find it this summer when he was visiting uh, in the Azores, also uh, some music from, from mainland Portugal, from Lisbon, south and north of Lisbon. And uh, as he brought that back, I found an arranger who arranged it for full orchestra and chorus. And uh, I'm very excited about this. It's somewhere between 15 and 20 minute mm -hmm piece of music, so it's really quite a, a large segment, as sure. I said. And uh, for the Fall River Symphony to be able to do something like this in our community is very important to us because we're one of the few community orchestras left in the entire region, anywhere, just about. Mm -hmm. And community is what is in our name, really. Um, and it's what we are about to a great extent. And mm -hmm. so connecting with the Azorian section of our community, which is very large, is very important to us <coughs> and um, just very exciting. And so I have to thank uh, Jose for his wonderful well, idea please. and his wonderful <laughs> dream for uh, giving yeah. this, this opportunity to connect to our own community in this very special way. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but I do want to remind people once again that the art exhibit of these nativity scenes from the Azores will be at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery here at the Fall River campus of Bristol Community College beginning December 7th through December 31st. So throughout the entire holiday season, you can come and check that out. On December 7th is the opening night of the gallery, but also the performance by the Fall River Symphony Orchestra. And it should be a great cultural event. So if you do have an opportunity to, uh, to stop by and, and take part in it, um, it will be a great community event. So I want to thank Jose and Anne You're for joining welcome. us, and, thank you. Uh, and best of luck thank as, as we get thank closer you. to this event. Thank you. We'll have more of Around BCC right after this.
Welcome back. Thanksgiving is right around the corner and the BCC Culinary Arts Department with Chef Gloria Cabral has some ideas for creating some delectable holiday pies. Happy Holidays and welcome to Bristol Community College Culinary Arts Program. Today, myself, Gloria Cabral, and my freshman baking student, Adam Gonzalez, will be making your holiday pies for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and any other holiday you choose. We'll be picking pecan and pumpkin pie for our favorites. Adam will start. Pies is very simple to make. All you have to do is put in your shortening or butter, whichever your favorite recipe is, into your flour. Add a little bit of salt because salt will add some extra flavor and ice cold water. The reason you use ice cold water is because you want all your layers to separate when you're baking off your pie. While he's mixing that we just bring it to it becomes a sandy consistency, a little crumbly and then we will refrigerate the dough in small amounts, just enough to put inside of a pie shell. We've made some ahead and we've chilled it. So what I want to do is I'm going to roll my pie dough into the round shape. We're putting it in a round pie pan, so I try to keep the shape as round as I can, using a little bit of flour in between. If it gets out of shape, you just round it up with your hands. Pies are very easy to make. When I make pie dough, I try to make a lot at once, and I will freeze it in small disks. This way, if I want to make a meat pie or a savory pie, it's all right there. I let it um, sit out in my refrigerator for about an hour or two, and then I can work with my pies again. The holidays, we go through lots and lots of pies. We give them out as gifts. You always make sure you can move it. Turn it over, a little bit more flour. And we keep rolling. You only want it to be about an eighth of an inch thick. Because if it's too thick, it'll take a long time to cook. And then your filling will be done and your, your dough will be raw. On the other hand, if it's too thin, then your dough, the dough bottom will always be soggy because it won't have enough time to cook. Try to make it a little bit bigger than your pie shell. And we bring it out on the edges. And don't worry if you have cracks in it. It's part of the beauty of a homemade pie. I make sure it's loose enough that I can slide it up. Put it onto my rolling pin. And I'll put my shell down. I put it just over the edge and just let it fall in. And I'll carefully ease my pie shell into the spot. If it becomes a little thick, we just trim a little bit. And I can always use this to patch up anywhere else. I bring my edges in and just slowly squeezing it to the same thinness as what, was, what we rolled out. Nice and easy. Now we'll stop for a minute. We have Adam's dough right here. And we'll take these in small amounts, about the size of a cup, a little bit more. And we'll put, refrigerate this so we can use it. Adam will be making pumpkin pie. He's got sugar in the bowl. He can be putting his spices and eggs. Pumpkin and milk. Very, very easy to make. I'll be doing a pecan pie with brown sugar, some corn syrup, some eggs. Oh, we got a few little. Just mix it together. You want to get all the lumps out. Sometimes your brown sugar will lump up on you when it's dry. A lot of times I just end up um, sifting it. A little butter and a little vanilla. Once we mix it, we pour it right into the pie shell. This time, instead of a pumpkin pie, I mean a pecan pie, I will have a holiday nut pie. I will add walnuts and pecans. Some dried cherries. And chocolate bits. And we'll throw this in a 375 degree oven. Adam's all done with his. How long does that take? Each of our pies take a different time. Pumpkin may be anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes. Pecan about 45 minutes and apple pie up to about two hours. We have uh, different toppings you can put on your pies to serve. Ice cream, whipped cream. Enjoy your help. Hope you have a good time with making your pies and have a good holiday season.
Some other news and notes now from around BCC. The college community recently rededicated the faculty and staff lounge in honor of former faculty member Margaret Reikabush. Professor Reikabush served on the BCC faculty in the English department for 30 years. The lounge was originally dedicated to Reikabush shortly before her passing in 1998. The college's cultural diversity was on display as the International Club held its world map rededication. Dozens of students, faculty and staff had the opportunity to mark the world map representing their country of origin. The inaugural soccer season for the men's and women's teams at BCC is now complete with successes all around. The men's squad qualified for postseason play finishing the season with a record of 11-7. and seven. The women did not qualify for the playoffs. However, they still ended 2008 with a winning record of 7-5. and five. Congratulations to men's head coach David Allen and women's coach Angela DaCosta on their successful premier campaigns. Next up for BCC Athletics, the reintroduction of men's and women's basketball beginning this month. In our Alumni in Your Community segment this month, we talked to a couple who both chose to attend BCC after already beginning their professional careers. Hi, I'm Richard Sperlett, uh, graduate of class of 1977. Hi, and I'm Lois Sprawlett, um, and I'm the class of 1980. Dick and I both grew up in New Bedford, and uh, when I went into nursing school, uh, my parents didn't let me go too far. Those were the days you couldn't, so I chose Union Hospital School of Nursing. After graduation, uh, Dick and I got married in uh, the early 60s, and we had a family. And uh, at that time, uh, I was working part-time at uh, what was then Union Hospital, and now is Charlton Memorial Hospital. It got to be after we had three children and it got to be into the 70s, um, the hospitals were encouraging nurses to go back to school, mainly because BCC had taken over the two-year program of nursing of the three hospitals in the area, be it St. Anne's and Truesdale and Union. Um, so we were competing for positions within the hospital even though we had um, exposure as experiences with individuals who probably might be younger than ourselves uh, but had degrees. I had discussed it with Dick because he was going to school too and we thought, oh my goodness, here we are both in college at the same time. Uh, but it worked out well for me because um, I was doing the night shift and as Dick had related to the uh, policemen and firemen were going back to school and so BCC was very accommodating to get the basics under your belt. I went to get out of high school. I, uh, I went to college for one year, and then after that, I started working uh, in various jobs. Still kept working in uh, family business. And then what I ended up doing is uh, joining the police department. That's something, a vocation I really enjoyed, helping people, being out there. It was changing every day. It wasn't mundane going to work, and I was doing the same thing. You never knew what was going to happen. Every day was always a new, uh, a new adventure. A lot of grants were coming down. They were paying for officers to go to school, whether it would be the Quinn Bill, whether it would be uh, uh, COPS was a different type of program for education. LEAPS was one law enforcement assistant program and that was very active in the early 70s. So I took advantage of that and I figured that was the future. And one thing about BCC, they really uh, got on board. You have to realize the police department is a 24-7 organization. You had guys working three, three shifts in a sense. You know, we had the day group, you had the evening group, and the night uh, guys working the midnight shift. Uh, they made themselves available to try and uh, capture all these uh, offices that were work on these crazy shifts. And they made courses available uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. So they got out of their way uh, for these individuals. And subsequently, uh, I graduated in 1978 from Salva Regina with a bachelor's in criminal justice. Uh, they also were uh, one of the few uh, uh, colleges offering a, a bachelor's degree in this area. I just kept going and at that point Anna Maria College put a, uh, a satellite uh, a campus in Middleborough and it drew all from the Cape and all this area. That was one of the colleges that offered a master's degree. So I continued on there and subsequently in 1981 I received a master's degree from Anna Maria College. When I first graduated I worked in the OR for a couple of years. 
uh, when we had children and I had to be on call in the OR, I had to reevaluate that and went as night supervisor. Then I went into the intensive care unit and worked the cardiac unit uh, for quite a few years. And then after that, um, I was offered a position in the education department, mainly because at that point in time, now I had a bachelor's degree. So I was able to deal with orientation, keeping the nurses up to date on any new systems that were coming in the hospital, whether it be computers or whatever. And at that point, I decided, well, maybe I should go back to school again. So I went to the University of Rhode Island. I ended up becoming the director of professional development. Um, at Charlton Memorial, where I was in charge of probably seven or eight clinicians and five clinical specialists. In 1996, <laughs> uh, 97, uh, the hospital was discussing merging. The three hospitals were merging. So at that point, um, my mentorship, I was with Aura de Jesus, who was really into gerontology before it was fashionable. And she was my mentor for my grad program. And she called me up and she said to me, you know, you need to look at possibly assisted living. That's gonna be the fashionable thing for elders in the future. And she knew that the hospital at that point in time was looking at land between the two big hospitals to build the first assisted living in the, in the area, South Coast area. And I applied for the position, got that, and have been here since 1997 when it opened. I started off as a, uh, everybody does, I started off in Uniform Patrol uh, in 1976. I started the first uh, canine unit in the city of New Bedford. We never had canines. I went before the city council and made a proposal that I think a city this size has a need for a canine unit. They accepted that. The yeah, police department ended up with four uh, canine dogs over the years. That's still going. It's still evolved. So from there, I ended up uh, going to the narcotics unit. Uh, I was a, I made sergeant. I stayed on there as a sergeant. Also maintained with the dog and drug dog, and worked my way through uh, uh, the, the narcotics unit. At some point, I started with I was one of the implementers of the community policing in the city of New Bedford. We started in 1993. Uh, we won in 1994. It was 1994, the Robert Trojanowicz Memorial Award. Robert Trojanowicz was an uh, innovator in community policing, and we won the first award because we were so diverse, dynamic, and what we implemented in our community that we won that national award. In 2000, I was offered a position as if I wanted to be the uh, public information officer for the city of New Bedford. And I thought it was a, a, a nice change, and, and I, uh, I, I took that assignment. We want, I wanted to get involved with the community, and I ended up uh, working on what they call Behind the Badge. It was a TV uh, show that was uh, sponsored uh, by uh, New Bedford Cable Access. Uh, we did numerous segments, probably over 25 segments of that. It was a, it was a half hour show that ran for a month on TV. Uh, what it would end up doing is I basically dissected the police department. Now that I'm retired, I took a little bit of time off. I, I joined a, uh, a golf course and uh, played some golf. Then I was uh, approached by uh, one of the other community colleges, uh, not a community college, a local college, and wanted to know if I wanted to do some teaching, uh, which I, I, I did, uh, so I'm, I'm an adjunct instructor. And I also uh, was asked if I wanted to do a radio talk show for uh, WBSM, a uh, radio talk show, and uh, I did that, and I'm still doing that, uh, a Sunday morning talk show, Sunday mornings with Dick Sperlap, so it's, uh, it's enjoyable. BCC attracts individuals such as Dick and I, not that it doesn't the younger person, but also it allows them to be in the workforce and stay local. You shouldn't look at it as, oh, it's the college in the backyard of where I went to school, like New Bedford High School. And I think my daughter found that out when she went back to BCC, that it gave her a great foundation to move on. Would I recommend it? Most definitely. If it was to do over again, I would do the same thing all over again. It just gives you, the, it builds up the confidence, and that's what you need to get you going, especially if you've been out of school for a while. And they can't say enough art. And again, they adapt the plans. And not only that, I know they're, now they're even doing online teaching and stuff. So they are with the future. And, uh, and it's a beautiful campus and just uh, a well kept, uh, well kept uh, the property's well kept and uh, the education. They can't say enough art. That's all for Around BCC. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.